Hello everyone, it's the Amber Nosh, and we are back for episode 8 of the Into the Depths anime podcast. Well, hello, hello, it's your boy Vent, and I'm back. <laughs> well, from their point of view, you never left. Oh, okay then, hey, <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it in. Hope everybody's doing alright. Uh, I mean, I hope so too. We have a lot of anime to cover, so they gotta strap in. And, of course, I'll be playing a lot of gotcha this week. I'm not going to go into detail. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> you should know I'll be playing Genshin Impact 5.0. <laughs> uh, there's, I'm not even going to say anything. This guy is obsessed with everything gotcha. Hey, come on. Like, there's some good ones. I mean, a lot of good ones. Mm. I'm not going to delve too deep into it because uh, you'll, you'll see the stream. If you're interested in watching Genshin Impact 5.0. Okay, but anyway, to get into it here, we've had we've had uh, quite a few anime, obviously. And, uh, oh, and I do have to mention in regards to anime. I do have the anime catch-up video in progress being edited um, for the, you know, the fall 2024. So, there is that. So, look forward to that. If you want to see what is coming up in fall 2024, are you uh, are you looking forward to fall 2024? Well, you know that I'm I'm looking forward to see ReZero. That's all I'm looking forward and Shangri La. And those two will be covered in the video for sure as well. ReZero is actually on the top. It's popular. It's the most popular one right now. We'll we'll get in more further discussion with that as we cover that probably uh, biweekly here. For sure, we'll be talking to Zero. Uh, but let's go ahead and get onto the current season. We still have quite a few, but we're essentially halfway done with the season by this point, or a little bit more than half. You know, a lot most. What are we, What are we starting with? All right, so we have My Hero Academia, um, episodes twelve through fourteen. Uh, I know not a lot because there was like a break in between, very weird break. I think it's because the Olympics or something. I can't. Remember. Um, <laughs> they're just like, oh, I mean, I don't typically watch a lot of sports. I watch some sports anime here and there, but, um, but getting back into it, where we, uh, last left off, Bakugo got taken out by Shigaraki. Mm -hmm. Pierced right through. Do the, a shot through the heart and you're to blame, you know, song. <laughs> bon Jovi. Yes. <laughs> Um, and obviously, Genus is trying to get him back in order, and he had a surprise headshot over here, apparently able to do stuff that we didn't know he could do. Uh, very weird. Yeah, that came out of pocket. Is that a joke on the Genus part? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just saying, nobody was expecting what uh, Ed Shaw did. Yeah, he's just like, I will become this kid's heart. Like, I didn't even know this was on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did, trust me. It's like, you came out of nowhere, really. Like, we, we didn't see much of you, and all of a sudden, you're becoming a main element to saving a main character? Mm-hmm. So that, that, that was a big factor there. Obviously, Dobby's back again. He didn't stay down. And he has, like, the powers of he, he essentially used the power that uh, Todoroki was using with the whole... I don't even know what to call it, but... Uh, the flash fire? Not the flash fire. The... Todoroki's version of the flash fire fist? Yeah. Uh, I think it's called white phosphor or something. Okay. So he, I think his is just full pure flames, obviously. Hmm. No? Are you, are, you, are you hinting at something here? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that fight a little bit more when we actually get back to it. I know we're jumping around too much, but yeah. And then finally, finally, after uh, a lot of distractions, including Lamillion's distraction, which nobody expected. With the butt cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, I mean, it surprised him, and I would be surprised too. I'd be like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> you shouldn't be surprised knowing the kind of person that he is. Like, I mean, a million will do that stuff. I mean, in that situation, though, wouldn't you be surprised, though? Like, you expect him to do it, but just, like, in the middle of a fight against this big villain, you're just, like, that's his idea, and, and apparently it works as a distraction. Yeah. And then, of course, in came Deku, which was the, you know, the main thing, like, yes, he's here. <laughs> He finally showed up after how many episodes? Five, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Five, six, seven. I think maybe actually like several. Yeah, because he was at Toga's side for a while and then he came mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had this, you know, great fight of him combining a bunch of his, you know, together like like Black Whip and uh, Fajin. Fajin. Yeah, Fajin. Yeah, combining the black with the Fajin. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then he unlocked the last vestiges quirk. Gear shift. Yeah. That was crazy. Like, looking at it from the surface, though, it wasn't crazy until they started to explain it and show what it can do. And then you're just like, wow, that's broken. <laughs> so... Uh, so for, as far as I know, Deku only got like power up quirks. Like the only quirk that he gets that he can use like that, it's just the black whip and danger sense. Yeah, out of all of them, obviously the danger sense feels like, I mean, it's good, but I just mean it feels like the less, you know, crazy. I mean, it's it's the spider sense. Yeah, I, I mean, it's good. Like it's important, but I'm just saying it's the less crazy out of the bunch because it's you know, a normal thing that you could have, right? Expecting danger. Sensing danger. Um, but with gear shift, obviously, how they put it is it breaks the laws of physics. And we kind of yeah. seen that where he's just like, apparently he's like punching five times within a small amount of time. Because he's accelerating the body to be able to do that. Or I, if I'm not mistaken, he can also slow down somebody. Oh yeah, he did that to himself because... Shigaraki was like trying to predict and then he's just like shift down and then Shigaraki mm -hmm. just hit the air. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. was, it was actually like really great. Yeah, so he's able to control the speed of his um body. And and he then used that gear shift overdrive to go 120% with Fajin. Yeah, with everything just combined. Mm -hmm. like, it was sick. And obviously you know, we we know Shigaragi's not like, that easy to take down, so like towards the end, even though Deku did a lot of damage to him, some kind of weird thing was happening to him. We don't know what it is yet, and we probably won't know until it shifts back to this fight again because we shift away. And you and you um, said that happens a lot. Well, as I was telling you, uh, focus on the fight is gonna waver back and forth between because yeah. right now it's a war, so you have like Yep. Three, four major fights going on at the same time. Look, you got the the Dabi fight. Um, you also got the Toga fight. Toga fight. You have a Midoriya fight, and then there's another fight that's gonna be happening soon too. We have the all for uh, all for one fight. Oh that one, yeah. It's still going on with Hawks and Endeavor and, and it goes on, like all of the, the fights drag on. Yep. I mean, the the funny thing is, we haven't actually seen anything about the Togo fight yet. They kind of just Deku was there and left it, and then we never touched it for a while. So we'll probably. Oh, you will. Yeah. You will. They're they're gonna touch on that. The one they did touch on, though, uh, we get over here to Shoji and the whole spinner regime. I would call it. Mm-hmm. You know the, 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 the rebellious group. The mutants. Yeah, the mutants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're gonna go try and free um, what's his name? Uh, I should have wrote his name down. The black hole guy. Yeah, the black hole guy. I don't remember his name. <laughs> I can't remember his name from the top of my head either. Um, but yeah, they're trying to free him from the hospital, and which is interesting. They're attacking him. That has a lot of mutants on it. And the irony thing is. We're currently using a lot of the mutant heroes we have on our side to fight the mutants. Mm hmm Like Shoji. Which, I wouldn't have remembered his name until this episode. What, you thought Naruto? What? Naruto? Choji? No, Shoji. 
Yeah, I know. I don't. I didn't recognize the name to the person until this episode. I never even knew no. his name until now. Well, there's actually like a few mutants uh, on the on the class one A. Yeah, there's there's him, which people call like Octo or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's the guy that can call the birds and the animals. I don't remember his name. Uh, yeah, that's and there's another one. I mean. The guy with the tail? Oh, yeah. Would your favorite be considered a mutant? Mm, I honestly don't know. He's never called himself a mutant. I mean, he's not human. He's, he's pure bird. No, he is. The only thing he has of a bird is his head. And that's what I'm kind of saying. Is, you, would you count it as a mutant or just like... I, I don't know. Um, It's still cool. I actually... I actually call him a bird, so... Yeah, this episode, Shoji had his moments against Spinner, who's just beefed up, just brood, you know, who's losing his mind um, because of the quirk he was given by Ultra One. He's like, yeah, I can't think properly. Yeah, so it's it's breaking him up because uh, not everybody's used to having a few quirks or a body modified by, uh, you know, like... Miroia, when he started, his body was breaking down whenever he tried to use the quirk. So not everybody's prepared to have that amount of quirks on their body. Yeah. I mean, of course, he had his own starting off, too. Even in general, without having a quirk, period. Mm-hmm. You know, he had to delve into it a little bit more. Well, I mean, they did manage to break through towards the end to the hospital. So now from here, it depends on what's going to happen. Uh, we do got Mr. Uh, the Mike guy there. He's there. He's there fighting. Because Mike the guy? Mike. The Mike oh. guy? You know him. He... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever I just thought you said Mike. Uh, my, uh... Yeah, no, we're not. The not guy. Yeah, Mike guy from Naruto showed yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he if he showed up, everybody would be dead. <laughs> he, would just uh... hidden, he would just hidden lotus them, you know? Yeah, use the gate. He opened the gate, yeah. I mean, he, we have to be talking, like, you know, peak Mike guy, though, because he can't really do much anymore. Well, he's on a wheelchair. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll have to see what's going to happen. It looks like we're going to continue on with more of this, uh, of the spinner stuff going forward in the next episode. I don't know if they'll slow back in that episode or not, but... Well, um, I can tell you guys that it's only going to get like more intense. So you guys are going to have to just watch it and see how it turns out to see if you guys like it. Let's move on to reincarnated as a slime. Woohoo. So starting off, we had the entire backstory of the Lightspeed hero, um, a.k.a. Kirito. <laughs> <laughs> He's, this dude is everywhere. It becomes a joke at a point where you're just like, you and you could just call every hero and just be like, is that Kirito? And if yeah. probably about like five times out of 10, you might be right. <laughs> or even more because he's apparently in every mainstream anime right now. That's true. Was he in My Hero yet? Uh, No. Well, let's find out. I know he was in Bleach. Mm, what's the, uh, I think his name is Matsuoka. Okay. So, so far, I don't think so. But he's been on every other main anime. I can't find anything on him. Well, he already had a lot of roles, you know. Freaking, he was the, he was the main character in Food Wars, remember? Yep. Food Wars, No Game, No Life. Yep. He's the boar in... Uh... Oh, no, he is... <laughs> Oh, he is? Oh, right. I forgot about that guy. I just looked it up. Owase. I, I, he was from that one arc where they yeah. were they were doing the cross. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that joke's out the window. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, you're right. He is in every mainstream. Essentially, at this point. I'm telling you, these dudes everywhere, bro. He's one of the top rated uh, voice actors. Yeah. Um, getting back on to him, he is obviously um, another outworlder um, that got a broken skill 
that literally just kind of makes everything work out around him for him yeah yeah like he doesn't even have to try it the things just work in place mm -hmm. well he was he was brought to this world uh for this whole reason of him becoming the hero not anything else so like everything works around him as far as i've seen like he has the best luck whatever happens everybody gets uh i don't know d d things just work out it does prove that every outworlder that comes in here just gets some kind of skill and can talk to the words of the world essentially yeah i think so far we have yuki um kirito we have uh rimuru hinata. and there's an hinata and then there's another one at the hero party, but he's not that strong. Oh, yeah. The wizard guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would kind of forget he's an outworlder. They said it briefly, and you're just like, oh. Yeah, but he doesn't behave like an outworlder. Well, what, oh, my God, I can't talk. We did have two other outworlders, but they were killed. Do you remember? Actually, Who? three other outworlders. They were part of the Falmouth army, remember? Oh, yes. And we also... uh. uh we had the one girl that Rimuru took her body. Oh, yeah. And technically, she... all those kids that he took care of her out. Yep. Those, the, all six? Five? Yeah. It's something like that. But they don't have the voice yet. Yeah, they don't. They, they have, they're they probably too young for it. Um, But anyway, uh, we kind of learn how uh, Kirito develops his party of uh, people. He just grabs them, essentially, like as he well... goes on accident. <laughs> they they just decide to follow him because he never wanted any of that. Didn't didn't he uh, stumbled into a uh, a big uh, illegal trade or something? Yeah, he accidentally stumbled into it. And um, we also know that he talks to Yuki as well. So Yuki's aware yeah. of that his situation. Nobody else so, is aware of it. Obviously. What I am thinking is, well, I think he told uh, Rimuru or might have. But what I am thinking is, is that Juki keeps tabs on all the other worlders. Yeah. Because he talks to Hinata. He talks to Rimuru. He talks to, like, every single other worlder. Yeah. He has tabs on, which is giving me an eerie vibe. Like, he's not the person he's saying he is. I mean, considering we know he was in league with, you know, Clayman. With the League of Villains. He was in league with the Clayman situation, so it makes sense. He also... We also had that entire... It's, you know, later on. We had that entire moment where Rimuru does meet that demon lord he brought back. He's just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Because they never... They use an alias. Mm -hmm. It's quite an interesting situation where the audience is aware, but he's not aware. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And it's weird. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just intrigued by it. Every episode I see of uh, Slime, it just excites me more to keep watching it. But yeah, so we had the entire light speed hero thing. He shut down the entire problem. And obviously the reason he has to come to Tempest is to deliver some elves that were caught in that trade. Illegal smuggling elves. Yeah. So that's the reason he is on his way to you know, Raymaru's kingdom here. And Raymaru is inviting people to come and see the uh, festival and whatnot. Everybody that you can think of has, you know, any of the leaders he's met, any of the demon lords he's met. Everybody's there. Well, not... I haven't seen Mr. Gee Crimson himself. Yet. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Like, I don't think he would show up. I, I mean, he probably would. I feel like. But at the same time, when we were watching uh, the scene that he's in the restaurant eating, Rimuru, we see the blonde girl over there. And I don't, I can't really recall if that's the blonde girl from the bad guy that she was calling the guy father or something, or is she's the maid of Crimson G? Uh, no, that, that girl was the one involved with the whole situation in Hinata, you know, bringing the, uh, mm. the seven days. And clergy yeah the seven days clergy using them that was the girl involved in that so they have okay. probably a different agenda or maybe just maybe they could be other demons 
maybe working for another like primordial demon or something just the thought because mm. they just... kind of look like they could be demons i mean unless they're angels because they've been they've been mentioned quite a bit but we haven't seen them yet yeah not yet maybe one day i mean if there's demons there has to be angels you know i said this probably way back when <laughs> you say that every time i mean it makes sense right um <laughs> But yeah, we had the the start of the festival. Outside of that, you know, all the kids are here. Everybody's here, you know, like we talked about. Everybody's here. Everybody's enjoying food and everything like that. Everybody's afraid to try uh, essentially sashimi. Um, that was interesting. Which, you know, they're not used to being able to eat fish, especially considering if you see how terrifying the oceans are there. Hmm. <laughs> well they did cut up a, a fish i just mean you saw like how terrible they showed like a glimpse of the oceans and it's just like a bunch of just huge like fish that feel like they could kill you mm -hmm. and it's just like yeah no wonder people don't have sashimi here yeah so i wouldn't eat it either um i mean i wouldn't know how it tastes either i mean never gone that far but it might be an interesting uh ordeal it might be good for all you know right um, but yeah, everybody's kind of getting along and the demon lords are here and Freya, Milim, everybody. Who was that one that was mad at, uh, Milim? Freya. Hmm. Yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember and then Rimu, Rimu accidentally made a joke about chickens. Yeah. Chickens. And she so, got, got all mad. Who's, who's Freya? I can't remember her. Freya? The bird girl. Well, I mean, I know, but... He was I'm the demon to... lord that stepped down from being a demon lord because uh, she doesn't feel as powerful. Uh, okay, and she joined Milim uh, with Ka uh, Carrion, Carrion, was yep. it? Exactly. Yeah, okay, I got it now. Exactly. And he had, like, the stubbornness of Milim sword it, uh, not wanting to eat soup. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tries it, and he's just like, okay, this is good. Well, Shuna made him try it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to push her. Nope, she's scary. You don't you don't like her when she's mad. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's outside of that we had of course the meeting with uh Rimuru and uh the hero. They didn't really talk much. It's just kind of like you can fight me if you win the you know, the tournament. Well, and Yuki, Yuki also said that if he puts himself to it, that uh, Yuki can be the light speed hero. But I, I'm just curious to see how Raphael is gonna deal with the will of the world. Yeah, and because Raphael seems to be having like a hidden agenda too. I feel like Raphael's more advanced than the will of the world at this point. It, it is. It has autonomy. Like, it can think for itself. Not yeah. just give Rimuru an answer whenever Rimuru talks. Uh, ask. But how are you... How is this battle gonna go with the strongest slime that can transform and do anything to the good luck hero? Yeah. Oh, the best part. I don't think... I'm not sure if you noticed it. When Rimuru changed in front of the kids and the kids didn't realize because they never seen that before. Oh, I didn't see that either. Yeah, the kids saw that Rimuru changed from a slime into their teacher and it's just like, they're just all shocked. <laughs> Including the teacher teaching the kids now. They're just like, what? I didn't, didn't catch that. Yeah. It was kind of a brief moment thing and they never like said anything about it, but it was in the middle of a speech. And I just like I caught that. I was just like, that's pretty, pretty good. Um, but yeah, that that was essentially slime so far. We're in the midst of the festival, and the next episode will probably be the tournament. So. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that tournament. Every time there's an anime with a tournament, I'm sold. Tournament art go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, how about uh why does nobody remember me in this world? Oh, yes. The last time remember. we talked, the last <laughs> time we talked was the end of the fight against Vanessa. Damn, that long? Yeah. 
So we had the fight between Kai Vento and, uh, you know, Vanessa here, where he Go finally on. succeeded, you know, by by kind of getting her off guard and stabbing her through the through the back. And then she talked about um, Sid. Yeah, she talked about how Sid told her to seal the sword away and everything. I'm just like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, I thought they were enemies. The Hello? thing is, she couldn't remember. So. Well. Until, like, it, her memory got jogged. Yeah, she did mention that there was a world restart. Yeah. So she's aware, which is... This whole entire thing is very fascinating, how it's going. I don't know. I kind of feel like they're living inside a hologram or a program or something. Wakes up. Like, hey, it's time to wake up. You're in a... No yeah, problem. or something like maybe they're running an experiment on Sid and, and they yeah. send him back into time or something like that. Yeah, maybe. Um, Outside of that, we're uh, on our way. Uh, you know, after this, we're on our way to another area that needs help. Being free from one of the other races in there. Um, and it looks like angels and elves and stuff is the area we're going to. But before that, obviously, we meet the general Kazuma. I never yep. expected him to be Kazuma either. But when I yeah. heard his voice, I was just like, ah. Uh. Yeah, Kazuma is a good uh, person to have in funny animes. You know, yeah. he's he's really good. Yeah. Um, For those of the listeners that don't know, what are you talking about, Kazuma? Yeah, Kazuma, Kazuma is the uh, MC of Konosuba. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of where he got his recognition, I think, mostly from. I don't... I can't... I mean, I obviously didn't really look up any of his other roles before. But... I can't think of any other role that he has done aside from uh, Konosuba and now this one. Uh, He was in Kaiju number eight, I suppose. Oh, wow. Who was he? Some random supporting character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was Gabiru. What the heck? How did... Wait, How did we miss that? Wait. Now that I think about it, he does act. Gabiru does act like Kazuma. I didn't realize that. What the heck? And now it clicks even more when Gabiru said that he wasn't popular with the ladies. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, those. Are the, okay, those are the two ones. I didn't realize he was in slime at first. He kind of. I think his voice inflection is a little different as Gabiru. Well, I mean, their voice actors they change their voice. Yeah, I just, I just mean, like, that's the thing. That's probably why I didn't catch it. But now that I think back to it, I can hear it. Like, I can hear it now. It didn't it didn't click with me before. Um, but yeah, we had that. And uh, obviously the, to the elven forest here. Which, before that, we saw what happened between the elves and the angels, right? Yeah. Um, essentially, the angels turned on them and uh, encased their stage. In their the leader. Forest. Yeah, their leader mm-hmm. in their stage and ice. Is it ice or a crystal? I don't know. Ice crystal, you know. Entire yeah. point is she's she's stuck in there. But apparently can still communicate. Maybe it is just crystal. Um, yeah. So, essentially, the elves, one of the people, you know, left over, uh, one of the, probably the second hand man or whatever, the, you know, the, the right hand or whatever. You know what I mean. Second in command. I don't remember her name. Yeah, she kind of uh, makes a deal with their group because she's aware that they've defeated Vanessa, so it makes sense, right? Even though they're humans, um, to make a deal of, hey, we'll release the hostages of humans we have if you uh, go save our sage, save our leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, But obviously, they're not going to be like, well, how do we know it's not a trap? Um, so she offers to come along to make sure she offers her life. Yeah. So thus, uh, we do the common anime trope of, I will take this person. You guys go on ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it is the common anime trope, isn't it? How many times? Have you yeah, seen it is. It is. It is a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm not even surprised. I didn't expect Rene to like. Do that though. I thought she was just gonna keep going up further. I expected the others, but yeah. Um, but Rene, yeah, and... yeah, I thought Rene was gonna go all the way to the end. But 
uh they eventually of course reach the top and, well, we gotta free her out of this crystal and you know the angels there but we found you know, out that this angel is essentially being manipulated by the robot thing yeah i think there's like oh yeah it has a name now yeah is it new riser or something like that no i i think it's riser yeah did we see another one of those the same thing that tried to attack vanessa is also around this hero so i'm guessing they're around all the heroes i think it's the same one uh unless it was repaired uh because remember it escaped so yeah. i think i think it's the same one and it's rewriting the heroes Oh yeah, we essentially start the fight there, which doesn't end up becoming a fight, which it was weird how that came about. Like it, it you know what I mean, right? Like it went from a starting of a fight to to talk no jutsu to remembering things to now being to now there's uh the god dude that was there, no longer him. Yeah, he has the eyes of the the last riser now too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's either he was taken over and possessed by it, or he was transformed into another last riser. It's a it's like a replica backup. Yeah. So it's it's very interesting how that's happening. Is obvious if you, I mean, he probably tried to do that to Vanessa too, obviously. But, but mm -hmm. with Vanessa, it failed. He wasn't prepared for that. Yeah, but Vanessa hit it and he left so the moment that the guy got completely taken over she leaves too yeah but he obviously remembered sid too which just keeps adding more to the mix so what the heck is going on here and why do they want to wipe out any memories of Sid? well yes yeah, so uh it shows up whenever they mention sid to a hero yeah so it's probably gonna be the case for all of them all these heroes they're probably just gonna have some kind of recollection that just means that right. sid had some kind of impact on all of the heroes so what i'm thinking is is that um sid did go into fight with them um and some uh he reform uh reformat the 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 heroes right so there yeah. was no more war but after years passed somebody was trying to change that again that sid did not exist or that's what i'm getting at so the person that that is that it's one of the last risers because whenever one of the heroes remembers it it shows up out of nowhere yeah it's the question on there has to be somebody in control of these last risers. question on who it is it's gonna be it's gonna be sid himself what no i'm just kidding it could be that would be a plot twist it's gonna be the one girl um i forgot her name then again, if he wanted peace, making him go, go berserk and try to fight these people is not necessarily a way to have peace. Well, eliminate the threat and you have peace. The humans yeah. are the threat. The thing that caught me off guard is the angel subordinates actually wanting to be defeated and actually like trying to be defeated. Because that's not what they stand for. Yeah, they didn't want to turn on them and thought they were... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it threw me off guard because you initially think, but it was just like, oh, so they're not actually that invested in this mm -hmm. entire scheme. Um, that makes sense because they're probably just like, yeah, he's changed. Yeah, but you, you'll never know. And in the next episode, we'll have to see the continuation of the fight against uh, this rewritten angel leader hero. If any fight at all, anyways. I mean, I feel like it has to be at they eliminated Vanessa. I think it's time to eliminate him. He's no longer him. No, yeah, that's another person that's evil. Entirely rewritten. It's time to get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Yep. I All think right. they have to rip off his wings, too. Speaking of that, I guess Rene finally showed her wings to them, and it's going to be uh, something to talk about later. Yep, that's what <laughs> she said. Yep. Let's go ahead and move on to one of the one of the greater gems of the season, Oshinoko, season two. Yeah, that was a perfectly cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had several episodes here to talk about. We have uh, episodes five through eight, aka the first episode was the one where you know Aqua 
trying to emotionally act and it's not working very well because his uh his past memories are, are attacking him interfering yep like you're not allowed to have fun you let her die you can't have fun so he goes through like panic attack every time he thinks about uh he i gets... he gets into a panic attack yes yeah so they take him to his father's house they gave the direct <laughs> the one guy that takes care of him yep the one guy that takes care of him and seemed to have figured things out just by just looking and watching yeah that that guy and knows knows a lot of things even i mean of course akane figured it out too but that is true she she connected the dots but it's it's because the guy did say something though i mean all it took was for her to click it was him saying i no, not really. She remembered that um, uh, the director told her that he had grown up like um, with no uh, parents um, because he saw a family member die in front of him or something like that. Yeah, I mean, he was very vague about it, but then she put it two and two together after mm -hmm. I was said. Mm -hmm. so, I actually thought he was going to go full out and just say everything. He just ended up figuring out on it. Um, even to the point where she went, uh, she went yonder. It. <laughs> it's just like, well, I guess I'm gonna. Essentially, it's just like, well, I have to let you know that I have to go kill somebody. It's like, well, he's essentially like, I'll help you. <laughs> it's just like, whoa. Well, he was there for her when she was about to take her life. So yeah, that is true. So if somebody saves me and reassures me, like I'd be there for that person regardless. Um, but yeah, we had that, and obviously, kind of his training um, for that overall. We'll get further into that later. After, and then of course the follow-up episodes, we had a particular, like kind of just focus on a certain character. Mm -hmm. So Melt finally had his focus, his anime. Who? Melt. The actor, Ooh. the the actor that was terrible at acting way before. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Yeah, he had his moments, but uh, he got it because Aqua told him how. Yeah, he told him focus on that one scene to perfection, mm -hmm. and then people will probably forget everything else. Mm hmm. And he did great. Yeah, he did great, and even got the attention of the guy that was been ridiculing him. Yeah, he's like, oh, he took this moment from me. He took it from me. And then we also see two more people fighting. Who Who is fighting? Uh, Kana and... Uh... Okay, yeah. Yeah, we have, they have their own set episodes, too. Kana has her episode next, where she kind of... Uh, well, Kana is kind of more in the back, you know, while doing the supporting thing. Um, because she mm -hmm. realized, you know... Akane style of acting is I'm always right. Akana is just like I will support the you know I will put you in the in the spotlight so yeah. I will become whatever is needed. Essentially just kind of being like I'll help support the play so it's at a good point. Rather mm -hmm. than trying to be her best. Thing. You know, just trying to do what's best for the play, not best for her. And that didn't sit down very well with Akane. Because the Kane, as we in the flashback, is mm -hmm. her is the selfish Kane. Because she admired her. Yep, admired the way she was uh, back when, you know, her childhood actor days. Mm -hmm. Even though their first uh, meeting didn't go over so well, considering she essentially was told that she kind of, uh, you know, kind of got the role without even having to audition. That's unfortunate, but yeah, after that, uh, Akane felt a little disheartened, but she's always wanted to outstage Akane, um, Kana. Yeah. Names are confusing. <laughs> they're, they're both very similar. It's hard mm -hmm. not to mix them up. Yeah, but we, we had the great sword fight between Akane and Kana, and honestly, yeah, you can see Akane just showing up off her entire stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, it looked like she was dancing on stage there. Yeah, she took the spotlight. She took that spotlight. And then uh, we go back and we have like more of a fix on the MC character of Tokyo Blade. 
which I don't even know his freaking name, but the guy with the glasses that actually does. Yeah, I know who you mean. Mm -hmm. The best uh, guy from La La Lai. Yeah, the guy that's just like, well, they can't see my facial expressions. There's no need to, you know, focus. Mm hmm. Which is an interesting point of view, right? Like, if they can't see it, then what's the point, right? Mm hmm. Um, and then, you know, asking Kana to be like, hey, can we do some ad libs and stuff like that? Knowing Vid a little well that, uh, you know, it would be the same for Aqua as well, helping her do her ad lib. Mm hmm. I, I was not expecting that from Aqua, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he did say, tell Akane that he would do it. Well, they, they talk mentally because... <laughs> no, I just mean like... Aqua and Akane had the talk before about... They needed to oh, bring yeah. them out to the center stage, essentially. Making uh, Kana shine. Yeah, so he said he would do it because... Of that conversation back when, you know... Mm -hmm. like, with the... Yeah. You know, their conversation. And obviously, it's kind of like... Well, he supported... They keep supporting each other back. So they keep, you know, going back and forth. That's where Aqua's just like, okay, well, I'll, I'll help with this. And he does actually help, you know, Anna shine in that mm -hmm. game. Shine and brilliantly. They both did good, let me tell you. So, question for you. What is uh, Aqua new technique? Uh, act like acting is painful and excruciating. Not, he's not acting. It is for him because whenever he starts acting... He gets reminded of I, so he's just uh, doing it with hatred. Yeah, I just mean like he's acting like as if he doesn't enjoy acting. Yeah, and it's and it's making him like shine with a with. You can see whenever he's in dark by by the star on his eyes, he turns yeah. black. So it's kind of like, as they put it, you know, the cold mm -hmm. versus the light. You know, the cold mm -hmm. versus the warmth. Mm hmm like that's how yep. the it's him versus the mc and the mc is you know more warmth and more excitement while he's just more cold and dark yeah i'm just i just want to see what's going to happen yeah i mean i'm thinking we'll get more in his episode probably in the next i feel like that's just, it's his time because he's in the spotlight it's we don't have that time. many episodes left do we uh not too many we have 13 episodes season so we have like five episodes dang yeah. five episodes oh well that's what we can probably expect is another is an aqua focus because we've kind of went through the foray of the characters here each having their individual episode um I guess yeah i don't i don't think we're getting any ruby episodes we had the first one I feel but, like we'll come back to her in a different capacity. And it'll probably be after Tokyo Blade is done. Well, thinking about it, Tokyo Blade, like, Akana's character just died. So this might be the last episode that we get from Tokyo Blade. I think so, too. I think this is the, the closing act. And I think the rest mm -hmm. of the episodes might cover, like, Ruby and uh, probably, like, Memcho and... Well, that's your girl. No. The gacha girl, Memcho. <laughs> He's a streamer, the YouTuber. Yeah, exactly. You're a streamer. Eh. In YouTube. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's probably where we're headed in that direction, most likely, because that's kind of how they've been doing it. And obviously, the entire ending song for uh, Oceanoko has a focus on Ruby. So. We'll see. Probably but, she's going to meet up with Pion again. It's time for another Pion episode. Yes. Uh. All right, let's move on. Um, let's go talk about Wistoria Wand and Sword. This has been quite the show. It has, honestly. It I you told me a few times to watch it, and now that I've watched it, I honestly thought it was just gonna be another copy of uh, My Hero Black Clover or something like that. It, you, and the the joke is on that. You're not entirely wrong. No, I know, but I thought it was just going to be, like, just another copy. Like, it wasn't going to be good. But even though there's a lot of concepts, 
I like it, and it has good graphics too. Like, because we have the the Don Machi author, we have the Black Clover director, and then mm -hmm. we have, I'm pretty sure, the uh, My Hero sound person. Because when you start to hear these OSTs that play during fights and stuff, you're just like, why does this sound like My Hero? And apparently it is. Probably Kirito's there too. <laughs> Maybe at one point we'll find Kirito here. <laughs> <laughs> Kirito in a magic world. Um, last boss, Kirito. So the main start here, what we talked about last time here, this is the, the start was how did he get into this festival? Because he was initially not going to do it. Mm -hmm. We can briefly touch on that where they introduce essentially the main top three. Um, the top yeah, the, the Julius, the ice dude, uh, the elf with green hair. Can't remember the name. Wendell? And there was... Whoop. I don't know. Don't Lindo. tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is. I and forget. then... Don't tell me how I remember his name. I can't remember the girl's name with the uh, lightning ability. So. The princess? I don't know. Oh, it's a lightning princess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Colette so, yeah. is considered the Earth princess. That is true. And we found that out on the tournament. Yeah. Um. So, this episode kind of... They, of course, have this this test starting off with the golems and stuff and obviously he's not able to show his stuff because the classmates are ridiculing him so he just makes it different. um so it, it yeah it we're, you're talking about the tournament already right no we're talking about the test before the tournament you know the oh, okay yeah where he's just like going to punch them and he's just like what are you gonna do punch the golem yeah the so Will is strong. I don't know where he gets that uh, yeah. strong. He's been training every time, but I mean, his name is, is Will. Stan Stadford. <laughs> his name is Will, so that means Will he has, Smith. He has a strong will. <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, the the main obviously part of this episode though is uh, involves the dwarf uh, tavern. Yes. Where he was what? currently working that night uh, with alongside Rossi, the roommate. Weird roommate, yeah. Yeah, the, there's something strange about them. I just, I don't mm -hmm. know. That. Obviously, they're not out of badness. It's they're they're out of good. It's just like there's something extra about him. That don't know people. Yeah, there's. It's like he has a hidden agenda, but it necessarily is not bad. Yeah. Because uh, he treats Will like an actual person, like Colette does, like uh, the random watcher. <laughs> I think he has admiration for Will, actually. Yeah. Um, but of course, we get the unfortunate circumstances that every other tavern is closed for the night. And that's why Julius decides to pay a visit to the Dwarf Tavern. And that's when everything goes wrong. He races as fuck. Yep. That's just, and it, it does make sense in line to how their area is. Obviously, dwarves in any form of areas are not good at magic, really. Um, so that's why they would be more ridiculed more than the elves, even though they were coming under different circumstances. Both of their worlds uh, were destroyed. All right, there are other warders in there. Yeah, the elves and the dwarves both come from different worlds. Um, and the elves would be treated nicer because they are more akin to magic and the society deems magic as, you know, a form of status. Magia vendors. Magia vendors. Yeah. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah, it just kind of cut for a second. But yeah, that's that's why, obviously, it, it's not good either way. But from the perspective, you can see why they ridicule the dwarves, and not the elves, because of that. Elves have always been shown to be more magically inclined. Dwarves are more, like, physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of the same line as Will, you know. He's more physically oriented, but that and doesn't have any magic. Are you saying Will's a dwarf? I mean, he could be. Uh, at least admiration of anything. Tall dwarf? Yeah. Could be, uh, I don't know, could be... We don't know. He's a. He's obviously a... Uh, he's, he's definitely he something. Parents. He doesn't have parents. I can't remember. The uh, 
So what was it that happened that made Will join the tournament? Well, Julius decided to uh, mess around and uh, continue to pick fights in there alongside his two henchmen, um, including throwing a bean dish made by the dwarves. So Will essentially just like, you need to apologize. Yeah. And he was like, that's not happening. Yeah, it's not happening. He, you know, obviously throws the food at Will and kicks the food at Will, but yeah and then uh his two henchmen try to do something and then utterly fail and they still have the happy smile on their face after they're knocked down on the ground which is the greatest that means they mm. just didn't realize <laughs> they didn't they didn't realize it happened now that i think about it they got knocked out twice yeah we'll, we'll go to the second time yeah but yeah so essentially there a fight brews between you know julius and him in that case Eventually leading to, no, like, I don't want to beat you like this. Let's do it in the tournament. I want to do it in front of a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Which does make sense. He's arrogant. He wants to do it in front of us. It makes more sense, too, after we talk about the actual fight later uh, in the tournament. It makes sense why he did this now, if you think about it, right? Yeah, it makes sense. If you put two and two together. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why he's in. Because they had that entire thing. So the idea is... They head into this game called Crown Attack, where, you know, they have a groups of threes. Mm -hmm. um, and on, in, in our case of Will and Colette, they, they got Theon, but he didn't realize what he was getting himself into. He thought it was just going to be Colette. But... Colette and him, yeah. yeah. That's what he was hoping for. He was utterly mistaken. And uh, Colette shows off her cool magic that can uh, assist Will even though he doesn't have his sword with him. Yeah, she made him a sword and a glove. Yep, gave him a freaking earth gauntlet and a sword and there you go. He has which, magic made weapons. Which is uh, very resistant, let me, say, let me say. Sorry. Yeah. Certainly got the case of hiccups right now. Sorry. <laughs> it happens. So they are trying to make their way towards the middle. And have to go through several layers of traps in order to do so. Uh, which Will does not give a fuck. <laughs> he passes it like it's nothing. He's just going through while Shion's just sitting here in the back doing nothing. Getting madder. He, he's just literally on for the ride. It's just like, Shion, are you going to do something? Are you going to do something, Shion? Well, he does. And then you're just like, well, God damn it! why did you do something now? And not like... Yeah. <laughs> He did something, all right, but not the thing that you're expecting. Yeah, what he, he did? What did he do? He decided to at that moment, then and there, that he had to fight Will to prove that he, he. Well, at first it was to prove that he was better than Will, but later on, as the fight progresses, um, Will doesn't want to fight him. But we understand that he just wanted to be will's friend he tried to help him when they were younger um but will didn't even look at his eyes will never paid attention to him like he looks past him and that's what pissed him off well i mean in that scenario though if i went up to some guy that's been bullied and is just like hey join my henchmen mm. <laughs> what would what, what, what would you think in that you, you probably you probably would. I don't think I would because that's just essentially just being like, let me be under you. You're telling me to be under you, not be friends with you. That's yeah, but he he was trying to uh, stop him from getting uh, bullied and, and all that. But since it didn't work and the guy didn't, uh, Will didn't even bat an eye to him, he just got mad. So he started bullying him too. I mean, it's just the problem is, is that the way you'd go about it? You could you could have just been like, let's be friends. And then if Look, they were... it's, it's standings mean a lot. So he's a rich boy that's used to getting what whatever he wants. So and being friends with a no magic, it's uh, you you said it yourself. They value more the elves because they have magic. They treat yeah. the, uh, the dwarves worse. So imagine what would happen if they found out that Shion, one of the top ones, is friends with a no magic. Yeah. 
I just mean like in that position though, I I get why Will wouldn't say yes because it does seem like he's still being bullied, and mm -hmm. that's what the kind of take you would get is being like you you want me to be under you so you can continue to mess with me. Mm-hmm. So. I get it. And that's probably where the lines of you know where he probably could have worded it a bit better, and that's why Will didn't take him bat an eye with him is because he's been doing all this stuff to him for all these years. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they finally decide, okay, I guess we'll fight. So let's fighting uh, freaking Julius over here. Well, well what we assume to be yeah. Julius. Yep. Ends up being some kind of ice clone. Which we learn when Wingo, the wind guy, just cracks him in a moment. Yeah, oh, well, we do. Yeah, that's true. Yep. That's when it happens and we find out that it's not him, it's a clone. And moreover, it gets more specified of uh, what that magic is from the Dark Arts Professor. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, we can get to that. Um, in regards to the Julius fight, though, what, what do you think about that? The Julius versus Julius? I, not, I mean, oh, not Julius versus Will, I mean Xion first. Sorry about that. So I think it's a fight that we kind of have coming, but it was the wrong time to pick a fight because the guy already knew that Will wanted to go for Julius, but that w that's what irritated him more because uh, he's like, am I nothing to you? You're looking past me again. Yeah. Um, I honestly, when they started fighting, I thought that they will end up being friends like a regular shonen anime. But I guess not. I guess we're we're gonna we're getting that later on. I can see the Deku Bakugo relationship right there. Yeah, something like that. I was expecting a change of heart or something. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be that easy. Um, but Shion uh, both alienated himself by attacking a teammate to also just being like, I summoned this fire falcon, and everybody's like, whoa. Yeah, from uh. So everybody got surprised because not everybody can do it. Yeah. Like there's, it's rare. We saw two people being able to do magic that not everybody can do, and which is, um, him, Shion, with the fire spirit, and uh, Julius with the ice. Um, yeah. The clone. Ice. Yeah. There's not much to say about the outside of Colette stopped it before it could conclude. But. Mm hmm. Uh, but we'll head on to the Julius side of things. This is where the big main fight lasted the entire last episode. It was a good fight. It was indeed. And obviously he liked this clone spell a lot. Well, he was trying to show off with that clone spell. Letting everybody know that he can do what um, Alfina did. Yeah, because Alfaria? Yeah. Alfaria, yeah. I mean... And considering they did reveal that it is one of her 12 uniquely made spells. Mm hmm Which, later on, <clears throat> it gets revealed that she created it at what age? The age of two. At the age of two, she created 10 clones of ice. And even Will gets snarky and tells him, uh, you're so proud of casting a magic that a girl created at two years old. And can only make like eight by his going the hardest he can while she mm -hmm. made ten and she wasn't going and she, hard <laughs> and she could yeah that's true and she could control them at will uh meanwhile uh yeah. julius cannot control them very well and she was crying too because she thought um will thought that he was getting bullied by 10 versions of her i, I don't think he meant it like that like obviously he knew this is like i got tormented by 10 of them mm -hmm. but i don't think he meant it in a bad way because he still wants to you know be with her yeah i think i think he was being sarcastic yeah he's just like ha i got tormented by, by 10 of <laughs> yeah uh the, the other funny thing is is he doesn't have accurate control that he had to use his teammates to control the extra uh, that first. is true and not yeah, only that, Will could see through. He knows all the weaknesses and strengths of her spells because he's studied her his entire life, essentially, up until they went to the Academy. Yeah, it was probably there when she created the magics, too. 
that's how he knew like hey you have ice leaking below your clones that's how i figured out it was you mm -hmm. stuff like that and he's just like how do you know all this stuff about magic despite having magic he is a bookworm of course yeah i was i was kind of expecting for him to say when i was there when they were created <laughs> that would have been funny it's just like mm -hmm. i was there when they were written Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so yeah it, it kind of shows there you go he he knows everything about Elfaria. and obviously you know what Elfaria said his her, her reason for wanting to make the clones and stuff right to have will be hers yeah he wants will all to herself he doesn't want anybody else which is yep. borderline obsessive but it is he, but at the same point, like, how can you say no, right? Like, the we girl... also found out what she's looking for on a predecessor. She wants a lone sword. Yep, she wants a, a sword. Uh, so that way they could be a wand and sword. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, uh, you would think that after all of this and, you know, punching Julius into a pulp um that he would win the crown right yeah yeah unfortunately what happened instead so after the the big fight and uh, everybody's tired so um somebody decides to sneak around uh i guess the, he saw the whole fight go on and he just grabbed it uh wingo yeah, Wendell, it sounds like he was there the entire time, just hidden. Yeah, like, that's what he was saying. I mean, how polite of him to wait for the fight to go. Nah, uh, is it polite? I mean... I mean, I guess, but yeah. he. I mean, I, I, I don't blame him one bit. It was, it was a smart move. So well, I guess we're going to have to see what happens. But I still think um, Will Steam was going to be disqualified regardless. Yeah, you would think, but I guess it's just not one of those games where it's just like that. But, hey, I mean, at least he was able to show his stuff. I hope it gave him enough recognition to be able to get a a tower, you know, recommendation. You think? I mean, I would hope. But, I mean, it, it may not have done anything. But, I mean, it does at least show that, hey, he took down one of the top three majors. He did, and even the uh, the one of the the electro that we're gonna call it the lightning princess even took note of it. Everybody, yeah, is uh, we get to see um, his uh, roommate go like, oh yeah, um, it's done, but he will look like a fool if he loses here. That's when Will stands up, a la um, a la Black Clover with the ending song playing. Or the intro song, sorry. Yeah, that that's so, where you knew it was the Black Clover director. Because yeah, yeah, that's what that. I told you. But uh, there was two things, too, from Black Clover. And I think uh, the other one was, did I say it was a Hero Academia? Yeah. I'm not sure. It, well, the first one was the theme song playing on the fight. That's Black Clover. Yep. The second one was uh, Black Bull Thrust. That's Black Clover 2. So if you remember, um, Will started running forward with the sword forward, doing the Black Bull uh, thrust from Asta. <laughs> and I don't remember the one that I said. Oh, the punch. And another thing to know as well is uh, apparently those two elves that we saw at one point uh, are a reference to Don Machi. Uh, which one? The girl? Yeah, the Lafia. Yeah. And uh, the other one. I don't remember the other one's exact reference, but I remember the Lithia reference. Mm-hmm. Didn't you say that it was the same name, too? Yeah, it's the same exact name. That's why you kind of get that it's a reference between Don Machi. So a lot of people are saying that this is made in the same universe as Don Machi. It's just that they're on a different town. Both of them have a big dungeon tower in the middle of the city. Um, it's just... Look, we really haven't explored Don Machi outside of of Orario. Yep. Like 
like Danmashi is there and in the dungeons and the war that happened in the in the city and all that but aside from that we know that somebody got casted out i think yep but we haven't really explored outside so a lot of people are saying that this and that are on the same uh universe so who knows we might see uh uh bell yeah you never know right we might see kirito here oh my god i'm pretty <laughs> sure we're gonna see kirito yeah is kirito, it, wait, is, kirito is, is, it, is bell's va right? yeah yeah i remember now he's the um, same one but yeah even after with story it ends this season I, I mean i'm sure we'll get more but we also get uh spoilers don machi season five in the next season and that's when will shows up over there yeah maybe he'll show up over there it'd be great <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah let's uh let's go ahead and do our final one for this podcast touch on elusive samurai Ooh, good show actually good show i am mm -hmm. we had the uh you know the new we had some new recruit uh, a new recruit obviously of this you know like ninja like guy the thief yeah the thief. Gem Gem gemba gemba yes very wild child all right but yeah mm -hmm. which he uh, he joins because of the kindness of you know Randy. yeah but he also asked for a providence so yeah, I mean, he offered it to him, and he was confused at first, but then he actually wanted it later, yeah. He's like, oh my god, how kind of you, you only want a providence. <laughs> you like, could have asked for more stuff. I know, that was just funny. Providence. He was just, like, shocked. He was unsure of what to take from it. And uh, then we have them kind of heading to this area that's seemingly going to be another plan, of course, of of the enemy essentially where they they're going to try to pincer attack so they can go after the, the actual shrine yes uh you mean the new area yeah the new area the area yeah. that's covered in snow and ice and super cold that's where they meet um i forgot his name yeah the name is alluding to me as well the tactician the uh, and swordsman the swordsman guy uh fubuki I just like Fubuki, it. yes. The guy that likes to eat. Ate the whole town's uh, food. Yeah, there's the whole entire supply ration. But... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like he's going to probably end up uh, joining the squad too. I don't think they're going to just throw him in here and then let him go free. I think he's going to go. Yeah, definitely. Like, he's already asking like why do you want to learn and all that so yeah because he was kind of we our mc is using him as another source of mastery uh in mm -hmm. the i think him, you tell him after the, after the fight teaching him uh i think like a buddha technique yeah he, he said demon buddha demons hearts buddha yeah in, against this uh this general that is wearing heavy armor and mm -hmm. uh, freaking looks like he has ants crawling all over him all the time which is he's he's an aburame <laughs> i wonder <laughs> yeah, no wonder right um yeah this ep last episode obviously they had some plan to archery them down from the top and then as they were coming down the hill even further they have other archers down here so it's kind of like a pincer of archers um it's not going to stop their, their strongest ones, but it got rid of a lot of the minions. Mm -hmm. It was a good plan, I'd say. Yeah, it was like a... They were trying to pincer, so why not us pincer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, into the trying to separate the general away from them. Which, mm -hmm. And lock him in a room with, you know, our MC. And uh, it, it did work, honestly. It did work. But then we got left off on a stupid cliffhanger. Yeah, that that got me mad. Because uh, what the last thing we see before that cliffhanger is a guy bleeding from the hands. And that's it. Yep. We didn't get to see what he did. And also, like, the start of that fight looked pretty cool. Like, you've seen them just kind of, like, you know, mm -hmm. circling around each other. That is true. I, I think that's what that, they're really good at fights in this. They may be yeah, on the they, shorter end, but they're pretty good. They they know how to do their stuff. 
And as you can see, we had no comedic reprieve this entire episode. It was all just serious. And why? The priest is not a part of this episode. There was comedic. Um when uh the lord uh went to swing him with the sword the guy just took out uh some rice and started eating it and finished it so toki said that he was hurt that <laughs> before he stroke he ate the whole rice <laughs> i guess that was the comedic thing yeah that was, that was probably the only thing but we didn't have any like future comedic thing mm -hmm. you know because we didn't have the priest in the entire episode we didn't have gojo the entire episode yeah, Gojo wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, he, he was unfortunately sealed at the shrine. Yeah, he is actually. He's going through the... He cannot see the future. Yeah, so he's yeah. scared. Exactly, that's what it is. He couldn't see the future. So he was kind of paranoid this entire situation of him leaving. So I guess next episode we will see what happens with this general. And mm -hmm. uh, finally deal with this cliffhanger. We'll see what happens. Well, I think with that, we will call it a podcast here. Thank you guys for all for watching episode eight of Into the Depths Anime Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and leave your comments down below if you want us to review another episode or anime or whatever you choose. Um, we're willing. So, as always, this has been your boy, Vent. And not. You guys stay safe out there, Space Cowboys. See you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.